My fellow Zimbabweans, Robert Mugabe wati tambu za vedu we. Kwita raka raka kujigija upenyu yovana vedu. We all have rights, interests and legitimate aspirations who all depend for their vindication on a solid, balanced and unbiased judiciary. Mr. President, while you are free to temper with all institutions, the judiciary is sacrosanct. It's the last hope we have for justice. This is why the Constitution promulgated for the separation of powers between the executive, which you occupy, the legislator, which guides your perimeter, and the judiciary, which serves justice for all. This cookie jar, Mambo, you are not allowed to touch it. Can I want to make a decision? I want to make a we know whose son-in-law is rewarded all the tenders under the executive administration. But But now you're frightening the judges not only to sing your song but to dance to it too? I mean, what are you teaching us? Perhaps when we are not happy with the judgment, we must also threaten the judges. Or we must go to their houses and terrorize them. The law is the law, Mr. President, and you are not above it. Now I know the presidency can have you feeling like you're a vice Jesus, especially after occupying it for so long. But you are obliged to observe the law. I have instructed my Secretary General, Agency Gumbo, and our team of lawyers to explore all legal avenues to make you accountable to someone other than your wife. You cannot say what you like in the breach of a constitutional promise. While you are accorded the right to comment or even be unhappy with the High Court ruling, you appeal to the Supreme Court. You don't get to throw threats, especially you. You who does not like to receive threats. Many are afraid of you, but I'm not one of them. I don't know what you think this is, Mr. President, but being president puts you at the mercy of the people, not the other way around. When our young people enter college, based on a promise you make, to employ them, to empower them, you don't get to have the right to say you were just joking. When parents spend all their earnings to educate their children because you promised an industry ripe for them when they complete but none is there when they come out? You've got to be accountable. That's kind of how the game works. You make a promise and you honor it. Now I'm aware that you're protected from civil and criminal suits but there is a condition there. I can apply to the same judges that you want to make your puppets for leave to sue you which I am doing. You have lost against our courts before, and I hope the judges have enough courage to protect the fraternity so sacred to so many, so regarded by all. I will beat you in the next election, Mr. President, but I would like to start by beating you in the courts. To my fellow Zimbabweans, when we stand for each other, we stand stronger. When the whites lost their land, we stood and watched because most of us were not directly affected. When Murabatrina took place and homes were destroyed that belonged to poor people, the rest of us stood by because we were not directly affected. When the tides Amara went missing, likewise when police brutality abused our young boys and girls, the rest of us stood by because we were not directly affected. We only win when we realize we are more than they are. Let's give this beast a figure. How many men is it? Is it 1,000 men? Let's be generous, it's 10,000 men. In fact, it's 100,000 men. But there is 14 million of us. We can beat them, but we have to turn to each other, not against each other. I am appealing to the legal fraternity to help us build this case. Those with the finances, help us build the war chest. And the rest of us, play your part. Register to vote and prosperity will be delivered to Zimbabwe. Because that's what we're all after. A Zimbabwe that is fit for all who live in it. And we can only get that by ensuring we work with each other not against each other.